Last week, The Ugly Stick received this letter. Dear The Ugly Stick, you won't believe it. A stain that looks like Neil Young with a turtle on his head has miraculously appeared in my toilet bowl. It is best viewed from a nearby stool. Come see, William Ruxpin. Enclosed was a sketch of the stain, as well as a portrait of Mr. Ruxpin himself. But William was right. We didn't believe him. And so we sent him a courtesy letter to tell him just that. But when we received the exact same letter two days later, this time with a somewhat more detailed sketch, we knew William meant business. You better come inside, there's something I think you really need to see. Get off the stairs, Sasha. You know we've got guests. I need to stay off the stairs, Sasha. This is the bathroom. This is where the miracle occurred the first time. Right there, that's the stool where I first sat on. That gets the best vantage point of what I believe to be the miracle in the toilet bowl. Any scepticism we had was instantly removed as we came face to face with this irrefutable underwater miracle. And so, this is where it happened. I was sitting in this stool and I was peering into the toilet bowl when suddenly I saw it, Neil Young with a large marine turtle on his head. From the shadows of the S-Bend, the unmistakable face of Neil Young, adorned by one of God's masterpieces, the endangered leatherback sea turtle. Neil Young refers to the turtle in the song on this album, Decade. The song is called Deep Forbidden Lake, where he speaks of mystical themes. When, when Neil Young was asked to comment to the significance of the turtle, or even the song, Neil Young said he didn't know. Young's prophetic lyrics are given almost sacred poignance as one stares, hypnotised, into William's toilet bowl. Have a listen as this line actually mentions a turtle approaching a bog. See the turtles heading for the bog and fall. How eerie. This is my cat Juniper. Juniper was with me when we found Neil Young with a turtle on his head with a cross in my toilet bowl. Juniper. You were in charge that day, weren't you? Juniper! Juniper, come back! And what can be said of that mystery X symbol? The X is the classic mark of treasure. Here I have found treasure in the shape of Neil Young with a turtle on his head in the toilet bowl. Is there more treasure? The plot thickens. But what does it all mean, William? I think this points to a very clear line of cosmic energy. We've got a turtle and Neil Young and a cross and they're all in a toilet bowl. The significance is striking. It's striking. What does it all mean when put together? Am I a chosen one? Or do I need to clean my toilet? It's a curious mystery. Yes, William, it is. I suppose that is the only part of this miracle we will ever truly understand. William, your amazing discovery has earned you this week's $590 Ugly Stick cash prize. Great job. $590 will come in really handy. It's been a great journey. Last week, The Ugly Stick received this letter. Dear The Ugly Stick, get a load of this. The spirits of ancient pirates have, I believe, recently inhabited the bodies of a number of terracotta gnomes in my garden. The number is five. I discovered this while taking holiday snaps of my little sister Sasha. Come see, William Ruxpin. Responding as any good citizen would, we ignored the letter, suspecting the author to be a complete nut job. But two days later, when we received the very same letter, this time with a portrait of Mr. Ruxpin, along with his illustrative impression of two of the pirate gnomes, our tunes were left no choice but to change. Kelsey. Mr. 
This way, right this way. Here it is, it's the garden. The garden in the backyard. The arrangement is similar to the arrangement that was in place in the day. The gnomes were there, there, there. Where they still are. So there we were, a mild afternoon and a terrific opportunity for holiday snaps. My sister Sasha met me in the garden. I fetched my trusty camera from the rumpus room. We took a series of photographs depicting the leisure time we enjoy during our holiday period. Sasha posed right here, right in this exact spot. She seemed so happy, but nothing would prepare me for what I saw on those photographs on that day when I picked up the photographs from the chemist. Looking into the photos, we became aware of more characters than just those demonstrating the comfort and leisure of holiday snaps. Eye patches and tattoos of anchors on my garden gnomes that stood just metres away from Sasha in the background. It was clear the spirits of pirates had inhabited the bodies of gnomes. These gnomes. Surrounding his little sister Sasha, Mr. Ruxpin's garden gnomes appear clearly with eye patches and anchors. Captured within the lens of a camera, we are witness to the unmistakable vision of pirate gnomes. It's my cat Kelsey. Kelsey says that he's seen the he's seen the pirates. What's that, Kelsey? Kelsey said the pirates are well mannered and mean no harm. Pirate souls, invisible to the naked eye, caught on camera in the bodies of terracotta garden gnomes. The miracle is irrefutable, its significance practically holy, if not miraculous. If one is to muse in the garden and sit and think about pirates and their spirits, one finds themselves in good company, surrounded here indeed by a small number of pirate spirits in garden gnomes. Here is a gnome. It is a pirate spirit. He is Fortuna. This is also a gnome. He is a pirate spirit. His name is Calypso. But how can you explain such a phenomenon, William? There are various theories. Some say an ancient pirate ship ran aground around these parts. The men lost thereupon lie here in the meadows, their spirits haunting the ether until now, when they have taken the body of my garden gnomes. The pirate's life is a hard life. Many would liken such life of hardship to the life of a gnome. The pirate's legacy is immortalized in the many pirate's tales. The legacy of the gnome immortalized here in these small terracotta statuettes. They will tell you tales, sea shanties and the like, dirges from Davy Jones's locker. And the promise of doubloons? Well, what a mystery. What a mystery. Congratulations, William. Your incredible discovery has fetched you this week's Ugly Stick $35 cash reward. Great. Extra soda and a banana split. Just enjoy. Have a great night. Thanks very much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, William. Last week, the Ugly Stick received this letter. Dear the Ugly Stick, check this out. The electric phantom of ex-family feud host Rob Ruff has materialized in electric shape. In my prematurely returned Big Brother 06 application tape, he's in the bushes by the gate. Investigation is a must. See you soon, William Ruxpin. Thinking the letter to be no more than whimsy, we threw it out and thought nothing more of it. But two days later, when we received the same letter, this time with a portrait of Mr. Ruxpin, as well as a copy of the video in question, 
we were left no choice but to sit up and take serious notice. My name is William Ruxpin, your big brother. I'm your next housemate. William Ruxpin. <laughs> I am a keen horticulturalist. Oh, and this? A small trinket that my Uncle Patrick brought to me from his trip to Vietnam as thanks for the work I did for him on his farm the previous spring. There, stop. Now go back. Rewind, shuttle job, back. Stop the footage, there. There it is, a haunting image, a ghost in the shadows, a ghost in the bushes as it seems, in the background of my application video to Big Brother 06. The footage was obtained by my usual processes on a hired camera I, was, I acquired at a swap Thank meet you. some years before and then using an in-camera edit function I had dubbed it across onto VHS tape the tape was sent away two weeks later I received it back in the mail but when I received the tape back there he was the ghost vision of Rob Ruff visiting my Big Brother 06 application tape. Laced throughout the electromagnetically encoded bushes, the unmistakable face of Queensland newsreader and ex-family feud host, Rob Bruff. Bruff appears to watch over William like an angel, and then, after a brief flicker, he is gone. Rob Bruff was the popular host of television program Family Feud. The program was axed in 1996 on the Seven Network, and now, this year in 2006 has returned to Channel 9 with the forefather of television entertainment, Bert Newton, in the same year as Big Brother's 06 season. But what significance of crossover do these programs share? To take issue with the clarity of the vision, pointless. To deny its significance, irrelevant, if not insignificant. Here I am with my cats, Kelsey and Juniper. I believe that they were the first to realise this occurrence in the videotape. Maybe it was a twinkle of the whisper. Was it a wiggle in the brow? But I think that Kelsey and Juniper... Shush, shush. We were the first to notice the ghost vision of Rob Ruff in my Big Brother 06 application tape in the bushes. But what is to be made of this incredible phenomenon, William? Here are some interesting theories. Rearrange the letters of Big Brother and you're left with this expression. Rob, be right. Is Rob the right one for Big Brother? Or is Rob the right one for Family Feud? Rearrange the letters of Big Brother one more time and you'll find an interesting occurrence. Not only can you make the words Rob and Bert the current and previous host of, Big, of Family Feud, but you are left with the letters I, H, G. But what do these letters mean? Here are some popular theories. In his grave. Is Rob Bruff rolling in his grave? Is he gone? Is Rob Bruff gone? Or will he come back? Ghost is haunting. Is Rob Bruff's ghost haunting the set of Family Feud? Or Bert Newton? Gravity in hell. This speaks for itself. Hi, Bert. Gee, Rob. It's an expression that may be heard currently in the halls of television stations everywhere. Just incredible, William. How do you do it? Many people, including my sister Sesha, my cats Kelsey and Juniper, 
and the host of Big Brother 06, Gretel Colleen, will most probably have asked, William Ruxpin, how, how do you know these things? I simply join the dots, and if I were to take the letters of Rob Ruff's popular family feud phrase, top for response, and rearrange them, Maybe then you would find your answer. Onset ESP Pro. That's me. Congratulations, William. Your breathtaking sighting has earned you this week's ugly stick $90 cash prize. Top effort, champion. $90. $90. Last week, The Ugly Stick received this letter. Dear The Ugly Stick, hold on to your hats. I have made a recording of mysterious voices chatting away in my room in the still of the night. The voices were brought to my attention by my sister Sasha, who complained my night voices were keeping her from her 40 winks. This really is a curious phenomenon. Come see, William Ruxpin. Naturally. We thought the letter was the work of a con da Vinci or Cynthia suck job and simply ignored it. But two days later, when we received the same letter, this time with a portrait of Mr. Ruxpin as well as an illustration of a popple toy, we were left no choice but to launch a full scale investigation. It all happened here in the bedroom. And here in my bed. Late in the night, my sister Sasha complained of me saying too much noise in my room, chattering away in the middle of the night. She couldn't get a wink of sleep, and sure did let me know about it the next day at the breakfast table. But the strange part was, I had no recollection of speaking that night in my sleep. In fact, it is a policy of mine to be just as quiet as a mouse when retiring to my private quarters. So Sasha's complaint left me as curious. As a cat, I enlisted the help of my trusty tape deck. I call it the trendsetter. I set it to record the very next evening. But you will never guess what I heard the next morning when I listened to the recording I had made on the night before on the tape deck Mischievous sounds sneak out of William's tape deck they seem to take the form of a gossiping between two people except they make no sense at all at least to our ears Little voices chattering away in the still of the night and in such an unusual dialect that as soon as I heard it, I knew exactly what these little voices were saying. I was listening to Popples. These popples. Could it be William's soft toys chatting away in a foreign dialect in the still of the night? The evidence seems irrefutable. Popular in the late 80s, the story of the popples surrounded the adventures of young Billy and Bonnie, two youths visited regularly by a group of cute furry mischief makers. The popples. These little creatures would often leave things in a real mess and pull from their pouches items too large to fit the apparent size of their pouches, presumably from hammer space. The name popple is derived from the sound made when releasing a popple from its curled up state.
purple. Purple. But how did you identify this coded conversation? Popple language is a P-heavy derivative of English where, for example, prime time becomes p, -p, -p, -p prime time. Incredible. And what were the popples saying in your recording? It sounded like my popples, prize, potato chip were having a real good old chat that night using a popple decoder I have translated their conversation here is a transcript gee whiz hope William is having a terrific night's rest yeah me too yeah me three Oh, you are a rascal. Hey, I'm a popple. Oh, Christ. My, isn't it still this evening? And so very dark. Yes. But what does it all mean, William? The popple is a curious creature with a nature of mischief. Was its intention mischief in my room? The jury is still out. One. Th Sasha, you're to keep from the pool's edge. You know you're not supposed to be so close. You have been warned. Just mind boggling. It seems those cheeky little friends of yours have left us all with a lot to think about. But I'll leave you with perhaps the biggest clue in solving this mystery. The Popples cartoon TV show theme song. Popples. Pop, 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 popples. The Popples. They'll make you smile. Popples. Pop, 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 pop. Popples. Popples living just for fun. Laughter. And good times too when the popples pop up for you. They pop up just for you. Congratulations, William. Your outstanding discovery has earned you this week's Ugly Stick $245 cash prize. Way to go, Willie. $245, show me the money, okay?